Hello everyone, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jana Kropova Harris and I'll be your host today at our seminar or webinar session on the taxes when buying in France. As you know, we couldn't hold this session uh, with my guest, Malcolm, due to technical difficulties last time. However, I have managed to pin him down and invited him again to host this session as we've got plenty of questions that were asked and we feel responsible to find an answer to some of your questions. So, Malcolm, hi, how are you doing? I think Malcolm, I think you're on mute. There you go. <laughs> Very well indeed, and yourselves? I'm good, good, thank you. We've got several people joining us today and we've got some questions to get through. But yeah. before um, before we get to answer some questions, um, I have put up a little slide about you, but I know you are a, what the definition of an expert is. You've travelled around the world and lived in different countries. Do you want to tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing today as a, as a, as a wealth manager? Yeah, of course. So... Um... I've been, uh, I came back to the UK after uh, 20 years abroad um, and back about two, about two years ago, just fun. Um, I've lived in seven different countries now. Um, six of those I was um, giving financial advice and helping expats. So uh, I've been there, done, done that, got the t-shirt, torn the t-shirt up and uh, thrown it away again. So um, I'm... All I want to say is that, you know, I, I understand what you guys are going to be going through by moving to France uh, and moving to anywhere else in the European Union for that matter. So I'm um, looking forward to, to helping you in any way I can because I've, I've been there and done it and I can I can help you. So um, that's pretty much my background. Um, those countries include everything from um, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Holland, France, Germany twice and a couple of others as well, so, <laughs> outside the EU. So yeah. Truly so, international, Ben. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> happy to help you guys. A lot of my clients are, are pretty much all over uh, France. So there's a lot of Brits in France. It's like second to, 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 to Spain in that regard. So, um, and more and more people are moving to France. So it's something that comes up an awful lot. People uh, have concerns about the tax, um, you know, tax, in France is is a, is a very complicated thing in, in, in some regards. It's very simple in others, but it's a high tax jurisdiction and you just need to be aware of that and aware of the pitfalls and you need to be organized when you arrive so that you don't uh, pay extra tax uh, just through ignorance. So that's basically, and it's the same for any country that you go to, but you need to get your ducks in a row in terms of your finances before you come rather than uh, once you arrive. All right. And last time on the last session when you couldn't join us, I actually went through an overview of the taxes, different taxes you might be faced with. Yeah. Um, when either buying property in France or moving there permanently. Yeah. If I um, just want to remind you to, to remind to our listeners, we have a an opportunity, you have an opportunity to ask a question by uh, pressing the question button at the, at the bottom of the screen. So feel free to ask questions and I will kick start uh, with some of the questions that were asked last time. And I unfortunately couldn't answer because I am not a tax specialist per se. So, Malcolm, we had a question from Claire. Um, this is particularly related to movable tax. If assets, uh, i.e. funds are released or cashed in before moving to France, will they still be taxed? And is the movable tax on items not held in France applicable? Okay, so that's very simple. Um, if you have cashed in assets uh, and they are sitting in cash um, when you move to France, then you are not going to be paying tax on those again. Um, if you then invest those assets again while you're tax resident in France, then you, they will be taxable. And there are ways of reducing that tax. But if you've um, already cashed them in and then you move over to France, um, there's not going to be any tax to pay. Uh, just be aware that when you do move large sums of cash from a French, from a UK bank to a French bank, just be aware that um, obviously you'll go through the usual know your client questions, um, KYC. They just want to check where the money came from. Um, very rarely will they ask to see proof that you've paid tax on it. Um, but just be aware that you could be asked that. Um, under certain circumstances, depending on the amount. 
Um, so no, you will not be taxed twice. There is a double tax agreement between France and, and the UK, but um, there are specific things on that double tax agreement. Some things are covered, some are not, okay? okay. Um, in terms of the movable tax, um, no is the short answer to that one. Yeah, it's about your movable items that are in France, not about the movable items that are sitting in the UK or anywhere else for that matter. Okay, that makes sense. Um, or, or painting sitting in the UK, not an issue. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I and mean, we've got one live question as well I asked. So I think you already answered that, but just for the clarity, if tax is paid on earning and an income in the UK, is it taxable in France also? So this is double double taxation conversation, really. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So which ta which question was that? Um, that just came up from Johnny. That's the last okay. question. So yeah, so there's um there there is no you're covered by the double tax agreement there. So there, there's no issue in that regard. Okay, perfect. Um, we have got a question from David, which is quite specific, so I'll try and remove too many personal circumstances. Um, but generally, if you are still self-employed and um, you, you both work online, which is a really new trend right now, you yeah. know, people work online and work for different companies overseas and reside somewhere else. Um, is there a way of getting taxed in the UK and still living in France? Um, and there is also, it, have you heard about dual residency? Does it actually exist in France? Yes. So dual residency is possible, but complicated. Yeah. So, it, and it's very much on a bespoke kind of um, situation. It depends on how many days you spend in France. As soon as you spend more than 183 days in France, you are considered a tax resident in France. you're considered a tax resident in France. Um, if you have an economic interest in France, they can argue that you're a tax resident, tax resident in France. So it, it's a little bit smoke and mirrors when it comes to that. But if you're spending over 183 days in France, then they will consider you a French tax resident. Simple as that. And then what will then happen is if you've got, um, if you want to have taxes that you want to pay in the UK, um, that becomes a very difficult thing to do because you've spent more than 183 days in France. I don't know exactly what your, your personal circumstances are, um, but if you spend more than 183 days, you're paying French tax. It's as simple as that. Okay, so even if you're working for a UK company online and you are logging in from France? Yeah. If you're based in France, that you're paying French tax. And the, the key takeaway from there is 183 days. That's the, that's the key. That's what they all measure it by. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Understood. We had a question last time from Edwin um, about pension wealth. How is that treated in France? Okay. So that's very simple. So um, there's absolutely no tax on the growth of your pension. Think of your pension as sitting inside a, 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 a safe wrapper. It will grow completely tax-free, whether that's a French pension whether that's a UK pension, okay? Um, as soon as you start drawing down on the pension, that's when the French authorities will start getting interested, okay? So then it will be subject to income tax in France, depending on uh, which banding you fall in and, and so on and so forth, which was in the presentation. So that's, that's, that's it. So you will not be, it will not be recognized as part of your wealth. It is your pension. That's one of the advantages of having a pension. Um, but you will be taxing it as soon as you start drawing down on it. Because it turns to income, right? It turns to income and you'll be subject to income tax in France. Understood. Well, I understand it. Thank you very much. It was very clear and simple. Um, we had a question about investment bonds. Um, if you derive an income from bonds or, or any other of the, the investment uh, vehicles out there, and they are below the minimum tax threshold in the UK, can these be taxed in France once they move to France? Okay, so um, investment bonds um, uh, in in France are so if you have uh, an investment bond um, in uh, in France, sorry, in the UK, and you come to France, um, then it will be subject to uh, to tax in in France. Okay, when you say investment bond, um, I'm assuming you mean an assurance bond or, or or capital redemption bond. 
So um, if that's the case, then yes, it will be subject to tax in, in France, yes. And even if it's below the um, minimum threshold in, uh, uh, in the UK, okay? And the way that tax works is you can choose between income tax or you can choose between, or you can have the flat tax, which is the uh, often referred to as the PFU, and that is 30%. But you have a choice between the two. So in this case, you wouldn't go for the PFU, you'd go for the income tax because you would be, uh, you wouldn't have any tax up to, I think it was 10,200. Um, so that's how that would work. But generally speaking, if you've got um, money sitting in investment bonds and you're going towards you're moving to, um, to France, then it can get quite complicated. We, you and me need to have a conversation because it depends how much you paid into that uh, bond and when you paid it as to how much tax you'll pay. So um, on the money that's currently in there. So that's a conversation for another day. I can't really go into that now because it's, it's beyond the scope of this. Um, Personal um, circumstances. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I believe I stressed it a lot. Um, that personal circumstances are something that determines what you're actually liable for. Um, we have a live question from Kevin. So sorry, I'm, you know, we're going to cut you off guard now. But we have got a question from Kevin, and there's another question to clarify something about 183 days. Or, um, this is relating in the receiving a pension um, from the UK now as part of a retirement, and you pay a tax in the UK. Will you pay the tax on this in, on a French site when you move? Okay, yeah. So the way that works is if you have moved, after you've moved and you've moved to France and you are taking an income from a UK pension, then the way that works is initially you will be paying tax, you'll pay the UK tax, okay? And then you make up the difference in France. You will then need to fill in a form that says that I don't need to pay the tax in France. I am now res tax in the UK. I am now resident in France. And that takes a few months to set up with the French tax authorities. And then what will happen, it will go to you gross and then you'll pay it tax, pay the tax in France. Okay, that takes a few months to set up. So when you move over, what will initially happen is um, there will be uh, tax taken off in the UK and then you make up the difference in France. But as soon as you do turn up in France and you're a tax resident in France, make sure you fill in the documents, and I can help you with that, um, that, that make sure that you, when you're paid the tax, or sorry, when you're paid your income, you pay the tax in France and no longer pay the tax in England. And you mentioning a difference, difference in percentage charges or what is the difference that you, 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 are, you are mentioning? So, no, I mean, look, the problem that you've got since um, since Brexit happened is that um, HMRC have started behaving very badly. I think I mentioned this in the um, in the presentation. And what they've been doing is slapping on an emergency tax code onto people's um, UK pensions when they draw them in France. Okay, so uh, that's happened three times last year to my clients, and I can't think that's that's a coincidence. Yeah, so the clients then had to go and make up that difference uh, in France and make an application in order to do that. That took like three months for them to get the money back. Okay, so there is, um, remember in terms of the difference, it just depends how much money you're earning. If you're gonna pay um, income tax in France, you know, uh, it just depends how much money you're earning and what, the, what tax bandings you fall in, yeah? Um, generally speaking, if you've got a low income in France, you're paying slightly less uh, income tax than you would do in the UK. But if you've got a higher income, you pay a lot more tax. That's generally generally how it works. But you'd need to look at the income tax bandings that I put on the, on the presentation. And another thing with regard to the income tax bandings, they are changing and they change every year. And the French put them up a little bit every single year um, in line with um, uh, RPI, so inflation. So just bear that in mind. Yeah. Well, no wonder they do protest quite a lot in France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, the, the I have got one clarifying question um, from Johnny in relation to. So we mentioned it's 183 days. If you're 183 days in any can, most countries, you are becoming a tax resident in those countries. I think it applies to many examples, but France right. too. 
But if you want to leave, how long do you need to stay out of the country before um, you, I mean, to avoid the tax liability before you return back? It's usually six months. Okay. But it depends. Yeah, it does depend. It's usually six months, more than six months. And I, and I take it the stamping of the passport is very important with this. Indeed, yes. <laughs> Something that we are not very used to, but after 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 Brexit, I think we're getting back to used to getting the stamps on in our passports. But I understand from my own perspective of being an expert that this is a really important part of traveling in and out of the countries for the for the for residency and tax purposes. You must get your passport stamp because that's your evidence that you left or that you came back. Correct. Correct. Okay. But there's still um, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's now becoming more popular because yes. of uh, of the 90 days of, of rule for the tourist uh, tourism. Yes. Um, there is a question about buying a property. Um, there is a, there is a question about particularly including your children on uh, on the purchase on the on a deed. So if we buy a property in France. Would it be advisable to place the ownership names to include our children? I suspect it leads to inheritance tax. No, listen, that's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. Okay, if that's a way to try and um, mitigate uh, inheritance tax or things like that. That's not that's not going to work. The uh, the French authorities are, are are not stupid if they see that there's um, uh, 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 children's names on on the deed. Um, it's still going to be subject to uh, inheritance tax in France if the uh, parents die in France and are tax resident in France at the time. So that's not going to be a way to, to, to get around that. Okay. And the gifting laws in France are much worse than the gifting laws in the UK. So you can do a gifting to your, to your um, uh, beneficiaries, to your kids, um, and then it's outside of inheritance tax in the UK in seven years. In France, it's 15 Okay. okay, so it becomes a lot harder thing to do. So you would need to give them um, the money really quite early in order to get out of paying the, 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 the inheritance tax in France. There are ways of getting out of, of avoiding inheritance tax in France. Yeah, it's very easy, but that's not that's not one of them. Okay, so if you want to do that, talk to me because at the end of the day, inheritance tax is a voluntary tax that you pay if you don't like your kids. Right. <laughs> it really is that. I mean, and and it's 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 not something you can do in your deathbed. It's something you need to organize beforehand. But there is absolutely no reason for anyone, as long as they're organized, uh, to pay either UK inheritance tax or, or French inheritance tax. Yeah, you can mitigate it very easily just by setting things up and um, having the right uh, providers and, and having the right structures for that but you can't as i said you can't do it on your deathbed you need to be organized it's definitely something people need to think about at the time of acquiring assets yeah. however there is a question which we already had asked before um if you didn't get organized in in the in reality a lot of people don't does your spouse you know, pay an inheritance inheritance tax in france absolutely not no it's only when it passes generations yeah, so any if uh, uh, whichever one of the spouses dies first, that gets passed on to the to the uh, surviving spouse. It's when it passes on to um, sons and daughters and so on that's when it gets it's subject to inheritance tax and fine. Okay, well we've got some questions about the rates and the amount. So I ask um, I ask my colleague to get the presentation up so that we can look yeah. at some tables with inheritance taxes and the banding. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that um, we also have an income tax question, so that will be quite a um, good one. Um, tell me, if, and here we go. So the question is, what amount does inheritance tax start? So I guess this uh, explains it for itself, but Malcolm? Yeah, so basically inheritance tax um, in, in, in France is a lot more complicated than it is in the UK. Um, however, um, it basically starts after uh, 100,000 euros. So it's on that sliding scale, as you can see there. I won't uh, run through all the numbers, um, but you can um, we can send that to you afterwards if that's something that you want. 
um, but it's over everything, everything over a hundred thousand, basically, and then it's on a sliding scale thereafter. Okay, so the the, the um, obviously high high net worth clients get get hit a lot harder than uh, than lower net worth clients. Okay, so um, so that's basically how that works. Um, it is a lot more odious than um, UK inheritance tax. Okay, so if, if you've got a property in the UK, for example, and, the, and, there's, and you're married, you can get up to uh, a, a one million relief as it currently stands in the France. It doesn't work that way. So yeah, just always think that France is a high tax jurisdiction and I need to get my ducks in the road before I go. So that's one of the things I can help with for sure. Okay. Perfect. Um, the property tax. We do have a slide on a property tax. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it not real estate wealth tax? Okay. Yeah. So property tax. Interesting. So um, the way that works is um, it's on worldwide property. Okay. So if you leave um, property in the UK and and come to uh, to France, um, luckily that's not taxable for the first five um and the way just to just to explain a little bit better um the way those bandings work is don't you don't really have to worry about um the real estate tax until you're over 1.3 million in the value of your property so that banding that you can see there between 800,000 and 1.3 million that's so you're only subject to that once you're over the 1.3 million okay so if you've got a property that's over um, 800,000, it's not going over 1.3. And then it's only subject to the amount between the 0.5% between 800,000 and 1.3 million. And then it goes up upward, upwards from there. Okay. So it's a difference. Yeah. And, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's done on um, uh, current valuations. Yeah. Not historical valuations of, of the properties. So that's kind of estimated and, and, and uh, done on a yearly annual basis. Okay, so just just bear that in mind that uh, you won't be able to do it on a historical value of the property or properties for that matter. It's, okay. Yeah, it's worldwide. Yeah. And I think nearly currently listening to us is asking questions related to this, whether the amount is per person or is it per, for both owners or how is that? Um, in terms of real estate tax i believe so I might be yeah so it, it can be both so if it's if if the properties are in in joint names then it applies to to to, to, to both of you so it's it's and it's just a a straight 0.5 percent so um but it's if it's in a single name then it's um so it, it's the same whether it's joint or both yeah okay. so just be aware of that depends what's on, what's sitting on the on the deeds and we did have a question about how our property is valued. So can you highlight that again for this international tax purpose? Um, yeah, so um, that will be um, val uh, valued by an independent um, uh, third party. Um, and that's usually done um, um, by the French authorities who then uh, issue a, th a third party to do that. That's not done by the authorities themselves. So that's, that's how that... That, that okay. And it's a current market value. Yeah, current market value, current estimated market value, and of course, you do have the ability to um, to um, contest that. Okay. So. And and the, and the question relating to this a real estate wealth tax or international property tax, um, does it only come into play on the equity you own there, or is it the total value of the property? So I assuming that there is a a suggestion that you can have a mortgage. Yeah, so it's it, 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 it's on the total value of the property. Okay. Yeah, they don't care whether you, you borrow money for it. Okay, makes sense. Perfect. Um, then we have got um, some uh, questions on importing cars from the UK. Is there a particular import tax? There is. Yeah. So there's a there's a there's a ten percent import tax plus um, plus VAT. But just just bear in mind um the way that works is that will only be on new cars okay so if you've got if you're bringing old cars when i say old cars anything more than six months old 
then you're not going to have that. <clears throat> excuse me, you're not going to have that problem. You just you just import the card, you register it in uh, in France, okay? Um, but if you're bringing in new cars from the UK, or you buy a new car and then you bring it into France when you do your move, if it's less than six months old, it will be subject to the ten percent customs duties tax plus twenty percent VAT. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, if you're already tax resident in France and you're going to buy a secondhand car in the UK and bring it over, yeah, if you're already tax resident, then that will also be taxed. So just bring them over when you move. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Don't don't buy cars after you're tax resident in France. Just move them over, get them registered. Happy days. Excellent. That's great advice. Thank you. We also have a question about setting up a French company for tax efficiency. So if I'm still resident in the UK, but I have a French rental income, so we could consider somebody's running GED or bed and breakfast or, or is it generally uh, renting a property, should I consider setting up a French company? Uh, no, not if, if no, no, that's not going to work because they, they're going to come after that. Um, uh, that tax uh, as you as an individual, they will see that as you trying to avoid the tax. Okay, there's nothing to stop you setting up um, corporate entities in France, of course, but um, but yeah, that that's that probably won't. That's not going to work. Yeah. Okay, that's a straightforward answer. I hope we, I hope we answer that question um, correctly. I still have got. Perhaps we switch to income tax as well. Um, for individuals, because there is a few questions we had asked, we had been asked last week. Um, drawing an income or from interest on investments in the UK bank, do these get taxed and are they falling into this table? Okay, yeah. So um, if you're going to be drawing on uh, an income from a UK bank, is that what the question was? Correct, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that will be um, taxable in France, yes. And it will just be normal income tax. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's basically. And an it. income from uh, investments. In the uh, income, yeah, income from investments. That's on one of the slides on the uh, um, on the uh, presentation. So that yeah, if you don't, if you've got income from investments, um, then the way that will work is it will be basically. Um, subject to the uh 30 tax or income tax depending on your choice which one you want to go do you want to do the flat income tax the flat tax the pfu or do you want to do it on the uh, sliding income tax scales yeah so that's how they will get you on, on on that there are ways to mitigate that okay which i'm happy to have conversations about um but um if you've got your um uh investments Sat in sat sat in the bank in the UK, and you're withdrawing the income on it. Then that income will be subject to tax in France. Of course it will. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So that's basically how 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 that will work. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 have you have the choices there. Yeah, you have the choice: the PFU thirty percent flat tax or the income tax. Okay. Excellent. Well, we have filled almost 30 minutes again even though um we've gone through the through your content that you put together last week for us um without you but thank you very much malcolm this has been very very helpful i think we've answered grouped some of the questions together from last week and answered a lot of these but thank you very much to my um audience and listeners i think um this has been really good that you could um you could join us um, and Malcolm's details are on a, on a screen should you wish to contact him. We will also um, send you an email with a recording should you wish to re-listen to some of these answers. I appreciate they are really, really technical and um, everyone's circumstances are different. So I apologize if we didn't cover your own personal circumstances. Please feel free to reach out to Malcolm. We do have a virtual event on the 26th of March 
on a Saturday, which is open from 8 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. And Chase Buchanan will have a number of advisors present and will be running several presentations uh, related to different countries and different taxes, um, inheritance taxes and income taxes and becoming an expert in those countries, as it's very, very complicated matter, which just became more complicated with Brexit. So do come and join us and please ask questions. We are always aiming to answer the questions live. Um, if we don't answer them live, we will come back to you in writing. And if you do have more questions after this event, please feel free to email us directly if you wish, which is at info at your overseas home .com, Or you can contact Malcolm indeed on malcolm.mcdowell at chasebuchanan.com. Once again, thank you very much for joining us today for the repeat of the session. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Malcolm, as well. Thank you.